Hi there. Often when we have two variables, say y and x, we would like to understand the idea of causality. That is, whether x causes y. Now this is a very difficult problem. So let's see how we can do this. The best way to understand causality is to do something called a randomized controlled trial or RCT. So the basic idea of an RCT is to form two groups, say what we call a treatment group and a control group, and randomly assign subjects to each of the groups. So for example, if you have someone here, and you have another subject, and so on. So randomized means we can either have this person be assigned to the treatment group or the control group with some probability. So we randomly assign some subjects to the treatment group and some subjects to the control group. The difference between the treatment group and the control group is that we are going to apply some treatment to the treatment group. So it could be, for example, to provide some vaccine to see whether that vaccine works, while the control group will not get the vaccine, for example. Then we measure some outcome, say Y, for the treatment group. And we want to get the average of these because everyone has got a different result. And compare that with the average of the outcome for the control group. And if there is a difference, then we can say that the treatment, in this case the vaccine, was effective. So the usual way to do this would be in statistics, or would be something called the difference in means test, where you get the average of two groups. So the null hypothesis will be the average of the treatment group minus the average of the control group is zero, meaning that there's no difference against the alternative hypothesis that the average of the treatment group minus average of the control group is not equal to zero. So there is some difference. So that would be the typical test that we do in statistics. So let's suppose that we have some data. There we go. Treatment group and control group. So we have 10 subjects in the treatment group. Those are the outcomes. And we have 10 subjects in the control group and they are the outcomes. So we can actually do this in Gretel. Let me show you how. A quick way to get the data into Gretel, just drag and drop. And there we go, we say OK. And it asks you whether you want to give it a different kind of interpretation, whether time series or panel. You say no, and there is our data. So select those two, enter, and we have exactly the same. To do the difference in means test in Gretel, say tools, test statistic calculator. So we have two means, there we are, two means. And we're going to get the mean for the treatment group, there it is, and the control group. So we have two different groups. Notice that the mean for the treatment group is 70. The standard deviation is about 12.7. The mean for the control group is 55, so the average is lower for the control group than the treatment group. Standard deviation is exactly the same. I just put in the values so that we get this kind of result. So you can leave these two options as they are. Hit OK and we have some result. Fantastic. So you notice the test statistic is around 2.6, which is very far from the mean of zero. So we can reject the null hypothesis. In other words, the p-value is smaller than 5%. It's actually 1.6%. So we can reject the null hypothesis. Coming back to the null and uh, alternative hypothesis stated here. So if we reject the null hypothesis, it means, yes, there's a difference. So the treatment was effective. Okay? Or the treatment did cause the outcome. Another way to see this is actually to put it in a regression format. So instead of having the data like this, we should actually put this as outcome 
move these variables say down here whoops this will be zero everything below this will be zero everything above this will be one call this variable treated so it's a dummy variable where one means it is treated or it is from the treatment group and zero means it is not treated so you can actually take the average if you look at that you can do plus average and you take the average of the outcomes for the treated subjects you get 70 as we did before and uh, you get the average for the control group those ones should get 55 and you can do a difference in means test but instead of doing that let's do it in a regression context so what I mean by the regression context is that we have y is equal to alpha plus beta x in this case this is known as the outcome variable and this is the treated dummy variable so we actually have a dummy regression here's the data again you will see that outcome here yeah, that's y our dependent variable and treated is a dummy variable one zero so one for the subjects that were in the treatment group and zero for the subjects that were in the control group so we can run a dummy regression so let's take this data to Gretel there we have the data now in Gretel if you open it up we have the same data and to run the OLS model all we have to do is go model OLS the outcome is the dependent variable treated is the independent variable say so go OK and there is our regression result so we find here that it is 15 it is positive and significant let's write this down so we have outcome is equal to 55 plus 15 treatment you can put the standard errors down here so 5.7 and there is our dummy regression so you will notice that 55 alpha is important now alpha 55 is the average outcome when treatment is equal to zero this is the average outcome given treatment is equal to zero which means it's the average of the control group then alpha plus beta which is 55 plus 15 70 is is the average of outcome for the treatment group 70 so what is beta so beta is positive 15 which means that 15 is the difference between the treatment and control group okay so it's positive 15 is it significant yes the t ratio is 2.642 so technically speaking it's a small sample size so we will not use the idea that it is significant if t is bigger than 2 so we have to use the t table so instead of 2 it is a different number but something very close to 2 you find the 2 stars there so it is significant at the 5% level which means that yes the treatment on average improves the outcome by a score of 15 but are we sure we have actually shown causation do randomized controlled trials establish causation let's step a little bit back to and first of all think why it's so difficult to actually prove causation let me give you a small example say this is me today and uh, I'm kind of at t0 and I'm sick okay say I am sick all right and what I do is I'm going to take some medicine and then tomorrow that's me feeling better so the question is did the medicine make me feel better so the outcome variable y is my health status and the treatment is medicine so did medicine make me feel better so most of you would say yes but the answer is not that trivial for example say at me at t0 again i am sick and this time I did not take any medicine and what happened to me tomorrow at T1 if I am better tomorrow without having medicine 
then you would say perhaps the medicine did nothing to make me get better. However, if I didn't take any medicine and tomorrow I'm still sick, then you might argue that the medicine made me feel better. The problem is we do not know what happens to me tomorrow if I did not take medicine because of the fact that I did take medicine today. This is called the counterfactual. And why it's so difficult to establish causation is that the counterfactual is usually not observed. We only observe what has happened to me by taking medicine and we do not know what happens if I do not take the medicine. This is called the fundamental problem of causal inference. Okay, so how does this work for randomized controlled trials? So with randomized controlled trials, as we said, we have two groups, a treatment group and a control group. And what we want to do is get the outcome of the treatment group, it's called Y, okay, given say treatment is equal to 1, that's the outcome from the treatment group. And we want to get the expectation or the average for all the different individuals. Remember, we can have many people in the treatment group minus the average or the expectation of the outcome when the treatment is zero, so in the control group. This is the effect of the randomized control trial. Now let's do a little bit of math. Can we say, let me just put this is equal to, to that. And what I will do is bring this down lower and I will add something to this equation and take it out at the same time. So I will subtract the expectation of y given tr1 and expectation of y given tr. But I'll make a small qualification here. I'm going to put here 1, meaning this is the outcome after the treatment with a 1. This will be 0, means this is the outcome before the treatment or without the treatment. Although we're looking at outcomes of those subjects in the treatment group, we want to know outcome before or without the treatment. Put a 0 there as well, so these two are the same. And, and of course this is 0 because those subjects in the control group will not get the treatment. This is the tricky part. But once we establish this, so what we notice is that RCT basically is made up of two parts. It's made up of this first part, which is actually what we want. It's called the average treatment effect, which establishes causation, and this part, which measures the bias. Why do we say it measures the bias? Because this, look at this carefully, this is the outcome of those people in the treatment group. This is outcome of those people in the control group, but before any treatment. And the average or expectation, we expect it to be the same. If it's not the same between the treatment group and the control group, then we have a bias. ATE, this such the green part here, is what we call the counterfactual which we said is not observable. So what is interesting is that with the randomized controlled trials, the bias goes to zero. So at the end of the day, as we said, RCT is equal to ATE plus bias. And when bias goes to zero, randomized controlled trials establish causation.